I'm going to introduce Lenny Christelle Franklin. Um, she's the executive director uh, with me uh, with the Houston Aphasia Recovery Center or HARC, and they're a fantastic community uh, partner with us. Um, and we're excited to, to learn a little bit about them today. Lenny. Yeah. Hi. Thanks, Dr. Nozer. All right. So I'm with the Houston Aphasia Recovery Center, and we're kind of your next step after you've you know, Lynn has had her hands on you and everybody has had, um, you've gone through rehab. We do work with rehabs um, because we, like Dr. Nozer said, even if you do plateau, studies have shown that years later, you can make gains in your communication. So um, I'm gonna skip over all the aphasia stuff because Lynn has already covered this, but at heart, we treat and support all types of aphasia. So if you have difficulty with speaking, understanding, reading, or writing, that's something that we will support you in. And Lynn did a great job of covering. There are about 2.5 million Americans, and a, we estimate to be, there to be about 43,000 Houstonians alone with aphasia. So that's a lot of people. Um, HARC is a communication skills program. Uh, we offer education, advocacy, and resources for people with aphasia, their families, and the greater Houston community. HARC is a safe haven where participants engage in supported communication, therapeutic socialization, recreation, and camaraderie. And we really do focus on that life participation. We're not scared of aphasia. You can live your life successfully with aphasia, and we're here to help you support that next road. So HARC is a language-based program. We're a nonprofit. We offer a supported environment. We're all about living successfully with aphasia. Um, we currently are on Zoom due to the COVID um, crisis right now. We are moving back on, but these are some of our friends that you'll see each day on Zoom. You know, we're, even though everybody has aphasia, it is not a silent place. We're constantly laughing. It's always a fun place to come. So um, come and bring your smile and join us at HARC. How is HARC different from a typical therapy or rehab group? So it is group-based. It's drop-in, so you can come as little or as long as you'd like. There is no end date once you become a HARC participant. Even if you need to take a break, go and live your life a little bit, you can always come back. Once you're a HARC member, you're always a HARC member. We offer training in supported communication, which is a technique out of um, Canada that really supports you in your long-term goals and will support not only you, but the community around you. So we offer that to not just the person with aphasia, but families as well. All of our programs are for persons with aphasia. Um, HARC doesn't accept insurance, Medicaid, or Medicare, but finances should never be the reason why you don't come to HARC. We will always work with you. Like I mentioned, HARC is currently on Zoom. We will go back in person, hopefully in July, and we'll continue that virtual program. So even if you can't make it to HARC every week, you can always join us on your computer on Zoom. This is kind of what our, our programs look like each week. Um, currently, we're in our summer schedule, and this is all of our virtual programs. We'll focus on your reading, and we'll read about true crimes. We'll read novels and have discussions on it. We'll focus on different language games or numbers. If you are, you know, a really loved math, or even if you want to have basic, basic, you know, math skills, and you're, you know, in a restaurant and having trouble with a tip or something like that, we will give you some tricks and tools to really conquer um, those obstacles. We also have, um, like Dr. Nozer said, we believe that music is therapeutic and people can make huge gains in working with music. We have our own aphasia choir that perform around Houston. But right now on virtual heart, we're doing a moving and grooving, and we're working on our June Aphasia Awareness Month musical. But it's literally just dancing and singing. And, you know, 
in, in those times, we see that people really can um, make gains in their communication. We also have a caregiver chat that's offered once a week, and it focuses on different tools and skills for the caregiver to you know, really offer a supported environment for participants. And it also gives our caregivers some time to chit chat and talk about the different struggles they might be having. Um, our caregiver group, like I mentioned, is on Thursdays from one until two. And even if you don't have a participant in our programs and you'd like to have some caregiver support, we do have that as an option as well. This year, we HARC is launching an intensive program. So around the country, there are intensive comprehensive aphasia programs. And what that is, is a very specialized intense therapy for people with aphasia. It's four hours a day, every day for six weeks. So that's a new program. Um, many people go outside of the state of Texas for that, but now HARC will be offering it here in Houston. So if you're interested, please apply online. And the first one will start in August. So it's really, really exciting that we'll be able to do that. HARC also has a Spanish program. Our Spanish program isn't available virtually, but as we return in July, we'll offer Spanish programs for Spanish speakers with aphasia. So check it out and get on our wait list. Here's a quick, great overview of what um, one of our original seven participants, Cheryl, what her journey was with HARC and her journey with aphasia. So let me show you Cheryl and HARC in action. Just another day for Cheryl and her mother, Louise. Cheryl, brilliant and at one time a master level social worker, had a stroke at 39. Today, Cheryl cannot speak, but is still brilliant. Living with a condition called aphasia, she enjoys a fulfilling life, but it wasn't always this way. Uh, Cheryl realized that uh, England was looking for social workers with their masters, and so she went to London in 2005. She had gotten off the phone with a boyfriend. He did come down that evening, thank God, because after Cheryl had hung up from him, she passed out on the floor with the stroke, a massive stroke. And she lay there for 17, about 17 hours. I brought Cheryl from London um, well, and brought her back to Las Vegas. I, I think about what I was told when I was in Vegas that Cheryl would never be able to recognize a number that she really suggested I just put her in a home. It was very hard because I couldn't get care for her. I was always searching, trying to find what am I going to do. Cheryl was in a depression. She lost her friends. She lost, and everybody was afraid, well, what do I say to her? And even her dad, how can I, what do I say? How do I get my point across? How do I make her understand what's going on? She lost all of that. The University of Houston was having a stroke research program. And Dr. Meir had, was in charge of the speech center at University of um, Houston. And that program ended up becoming HARC. When someone has aphasia, the challenges they face day in and day out can be devastating. Um, and what is critical for the recovery from aphasia is that they be in an environment that supports their efforts to communicate and build that confidence and regain that sense of self. Now Cheryl is regaining her confidence and sense of worth through the friends and community she has found at heart, Houston Aphasia Recovery Center. But Cheryl is not alone in other ways too. 
There are 2.5 million people in the U.S. with aphasia who have lost, in varying degrees, their ability to understand or express speech due to brain trauma from strokes, injuries, and more. There are 43,000 in Houston alone. Park is helping as many as it can to live fully functional lives. They are participating in art, music, book clubs, and most importantly, socially interacting. And I think you see the evidence of that empowerment in someone like Cheryl, where she, um, when we first met Cheryl, was very reticent to initiate or engage in a conversation or participate in a conversation. It was clear that she understood what it is we were talking about, but she was reticent. And now when you see Cheryl, she's like a different person. So she welcomes people as they come to Hark. She has them sign in. She has a role to play. And, um, and she gets to, throughout the day there, engage in an enriched environment. She has just improved daily. She, there are a lot of things she loves. She loves painting. She loves the book club. She loves the art class. And she loves the music. <laughs> so uh, she just enjoy, enjoyed going and doing. Hark has given her confidence. And it is the best program, period. One of the leading centers for aphasia research, Park is, first and foremost, a people place. Cheryl knows that as well as anyone. So it's critical that we find ways for that person to regain as much of their self as possible. So that, that adjustment to their, their challenges, but also in spite of their challenges, staying in touch with who they are and, and, and what's important to them whether it's their church or their, their um, uh, social clubs or whatever, it, it's, it's critical that they be able to regain who they are because they haven't changed. Aphasia hasn't taken away who they are. It's just made it more challenging for them to express themselves. That support and love is the core of what makes Park special. And in turn, Park, now in its 11th year, operates through the kindness of others. It is reliant upon the generosity of those with true awareness, individuals who understand the importance of assisting others who yearn to be relevant once again. With ongoing support, Park will continue to grow, expanding to satellite locations throughout Houston, enabling even more people with aphasia to have their voices in some form heard again. When we developed Hark, we set out to provide a place where people could come and work on their communication. The reality is there's no other place like Hark in Houston. It's the one place that people with aphasia can go and, and at their own pace, without fear of being discharged or cut off, work to continue to find out how they can best recover their lives. Um, in the presence of a patient. So that's a little bit about, that's a little clip about Hark and a journey, the journey of somebody who might have aphasia and how they might su be supported at Hark. Um, Hark has a team of speech therapists a music therapist, an art therapist, a nursing assistant, and we utilize a lot of support from graduate graduate externs um, across Texas and the United States now. Um, our, the great thing about HARC is that there isn't a checkout date. So if you do three months from now, you do get more therapy, you can come back. It's always a place we're always here for you. Um, a little bit about our membership fees and our daily programs. So Park does, we are a nonprofit, um, but we do have a membership fee. Our membership fee is $600, $450 for virtual, and each program day is $30 or $20. Finances should never be the reason why you don't come. We're a nonprofit. So there is a sliding scale, scale fee, and we'll work with you to make Hark affordable. So finances, never the reason not to come to Hark. We'll work it out. 
Um, our online programs are available. And if you know, you're ready to trial it, we offer free trials. So you can come in and check out HARC to see if that's a good fit for you. HARC works with a lot of programs, a lot tier, neurorestorative, a lot of programs. So while you're in your rehab, if you're ready to be discharged, we'll work with your speech therapist to come up with a plan for you to start coming to HARC while you're in that um, wait period. Here's just a few links about HARC and our staff. Um, any questions about HARC or what we do in the community? Hi, it's Dr. Nezer. I don't uh, see any questions right now. Great presentation. Really appreciate you providing all that information to the group. Um, I think some folks may have had a, a hard time. I haven't seen the video. So if you wouldn't mind, if you could, um, uh, send me the link to that, or I can put it on our Facebook page uh, when this program's over. And it looks like we do have, I don't know if you can, uh, oh, I'll answer that minute. question is for me. Um, okay. Uh, so yeah, so if you send me the link, I'll put that there for those of you who didn't get to see it. And uh, we really appreciate you joining us today. Thank you.